Hello and welcome to another Haas tip of the day. Right now we're going to cover mill chatter and we're going to give you some general tips on how to avoid it. And I promise if you stick around to the end of the video, we're going to show you what these tuning forks are for. Okay, welcome to the chatter zone. While this is running, you can make your best guess as to the cause of this chatter. Okay, do you want to hear the most annoying sound in the world? Okay, so we know what chatter sounds like. Let's see what it looks like. Oh, nice. Now the term chatter is, is almost always a misnomer, right? It means something different to, to lots of different people. For our purposes, chatter is simply when a, a tool or a workpiece vibrates enough to give us surface problems. And we, and we definitely see that now. Now the solution to our chatter problem always comes down to these three aspects of our setup. I'm talking about our work holding, our tooling, and our part program. So think about these aspects as interconnected, right? If um, one of these aspects of our setup is compromised, the other two need to, to step up and pick up the slack. So as an example, if we're forced to use a tool that is crazy long, then our work holding better be really strong to compensate. Along those same lines, our program is going to have to be perfect, right? We're going to have to use modern tool paths and really ideal feeds and speeds to compensate for using that odd tool. Now, let's take a look at our work holding here. <laughs> Clearly, our part is not being supported well, right? With this part hanging out so far, when the tool is in the cut, it's really going to be bouncing around, giving us a lot of chatter. So we have to dampen this. We could go with a larger vise, right, like an 8-inch curt vise. Right off the bat, we're going to want to center up this material. But even when I've done that, I still get some chatter on both ends. So what I'm going to do in this situation is just go ahead and make some uh, wider jaws. I'm going to change out these jaws right now, and we'll go from there. This work holding setup is a problem we can fix. In fact, we did fix it, right? We centered up our material, and we went with wider jaws that get a better hold on our part along its entire length. If we couldn't touch our setup for some reason, then we would have to look at strengthening our program and our tooling. Now let's take a look at our tooling. Now typically if we want to dampen vibration when it comes to our tooling, we want to shorten up those tools. But what part of it? Well, all of it. We want to shorten up our holders, our, our flute length even. Shorten up everything you can. Now sometimes you have no choice. You've got a deep pocket you have to go into to make some type of feature. In that case, go with the shortest flute length possible, right? You've got a solid carbide tool here that only has the flutes necessary for the pocket that you have to create. Now, these are some unique tools, right? If you look at the end of this guy, it actually has variable flute spacing. This interrupts our cut and cuts down on chatter. Along these same lines, the widia that I'm using or will use along the outside of our part has a, a variable helix, right? It's not a constant helix, and it has variable pitch teeth on the end, right? Variable flute. These interruptions in the cut keep us from finding a sweet spot where things tend to chatter. So going with some special tools can also get you out of trouble fast. By going with ideal tools for our job, we were able to get rid of chatter. But what if we couldn't change our tools? What if we had to use a long holder? Or if we had to use a long end mill? Again, in that case, we would have to strengthen our work holding or strengthen our program. Now, we're going to go back to the tuning forks now, as promised, and give you a little physics experiment that will help illustrate how small changes to our program can help erase chatter. So with these two tuning forks, we're going to demonstrate resonance. Now, resonance is when the natural frequencies of, of two objects combine and they amplify each other, right? Sometimes you'll hear that on a CNC machine. When you hear that little, that little twinge, that little high-pitched squeal, and it builds and builds until it gets away from itself. 
I'm going to set this tuning fork up against our ping pong ball and give the second tuning fork a whack. Okay, pretty amazing, right? It's like remote control. Okay, now watch this. If I adjust this tuning fork so it no longer creates the same C note as this tuning fork, and I tap it, it now creates a slightly different sound, and it's no longer exciting the second tuning fork in this same way. Sometimes the natural frequencies of our tooling vibrate at just the right frequency to excite our work holding or our part that might be hanging out a little bit. If we can just change our tooling in some way, right, adjust that tool up or down like we adjusted our tuning fork, we can change the natural frequency of our tooling and stop our chatter. A CNC machine is not a tuning fork though. We've got a whole lot of things we can play with from within our program. Our feeds and our speeds, our depth of cuts, both axial and radial, and also just our tool pass in general, right? We've got these modern tool paths that give us a constant tool engagement. Now the closest thing to a magic button on our machine is this spindle override button, right? We've all walked up to the machine when we hear that chatter start to build, start to resonate, and we've pressed the minus 10% spindle button twice and seen that chatter disappear. But sometimes that's not good enough. Now, now remember, looking at our tuning fork, when we adjusted this down, we got out of the resonance zone. In the same way, I can adjust this tuning fork up. No resonance. Again, moving it back down in the middle, we can end up in the sweet spot where we create that resonance. In the same way on a CNC machine, moving the RPM down will often fix our problem, but sometimes, especially with longer tools, moving our RPM up can get us out of that, that area of resonance and, and stop the chatter. So I've lowered my RPM and my chatter goes away for about three seconds, right? And then we hear it. We hear the chatter come right back as that tool runs into the inside corner. Let me grab my part here and show you what's going on. Now, what happened here is that our tool engagement, the percent of the tool that's engaged in the material at any one time is constantly changing. At one point in the pocket, we might have a 15% tool engagement and the, the tool is happy running at 3000 RPMs. At another spot in the pocket, we might have a 40% tool engagement. And at that point, we would need to lower our RPM to 2000 RPM to get rid of the chatter. And here in this slot or this channel here, with a very long tool, we might have to lower the RPM to 1000 RPMs because we've got 50% of the tool engaged in that cut. Okay, so it's impossible to find a perfect feed and speed that's gonna work in every single corner of this old style pocket. You have to slow down your entire program to avoid chatter in just a few of those odd spots. This is the beauty of the newer tool pass. We're using adaptive tool pass, dynamic tool pass. Um, there's tool pass like a volume mill that actually base a tool path based on the size of the chips. But what we're doing here is giving ourselves a constant tool engagement. This is a game changer. This has changed the world of machining, right? This is using an adaptive or dynamic tool path. Our tool engagement is constant throughout the entire pocket and machine. I don't even care what that engagement is. 10%, 30%. What I care about is that that tool load, the engagement, isn't changing. Once I find the perfect RPM or the perfect feed rate, I can stick with it through the entire pocket. If I only had one bit of information to give you today, it would be this. Find yourself a CAM system that has a modern high-speed machining tool path that has constant engagement. Well, this has been a 10,000-foot overview of a giant topic. Remember, your work holding, your tooling, and your program are linked. If you're weak in one area, the other two are going to have to step up and pick up the slack. Now, if you've learned something in today's video, be sure to subscribe to this channel. You don't want to miss what we've got coming up next. If you're watching on Facebook or Instagram, be sure to share these videos with your friends. 
like and comment. We want to hear what you have to say. Thanks for letting Haas be a part of your success and for watching this Haas Tip of the Day.